okay. This video might be a little bit controversial, but I just wanted to make it because there are so many people fangirling about Elon Musk. And we'll hopefully shed some light as to who he is as a person versus what you actually see in the public eye. And if you've never seen this face before, welcome to the channel. My name is Rue. I'm happy to have you. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, if you like content like this. And to be completely transparent with you guys who don't know who I am, I'm not some guy that hates Tesla or Elon. In fact, I was a big investor in their stock. So if it feels like I'm just digging into his back, I promise you I'm not. I'm just sharing with you guys what I found about the guy. So without further ado, let's jump into how Elon Musk might just be another crusty billionaire. And to fully understand who he is, we kind of have to go back in time to the foundation of who raised him, and that was his mom and his dad. And we're gonna focus primarily on his dad, and even though this might be a little bit indirect, it does play a role into who we are as people because what psychology teaches us is that most of the time we either latch on to the same characteristics as our parents or we push away from it, but most of the time it's somewhere in between. So let's talk about his father. In an interview back in 2017, Elon Musk claimed that his dad is pure evil. I'm gonna go ahead and read you the exact quote, okay? This is from Elon's mouth, not from mine. He said, my dad will have a carefully thought out plan of evil. He will plan evil. You have no idea how bad. Almost every crime you can possibly think of, he has done. Almost every evil thing you could possibly think of, he has done done. But I think in Elon's case, because he recognizes the evils that his father has done, that is typically at least the first step of changing that within yourself. If you can recognize certain habits or certain evils, you are less likely to repeat those same things within your own life. But typically, unfortunately, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And Elon does have a point. His dad, Errol, did shoot and kill three people. Now, he claimed self-defense and was later acquitted for the crime. But not only that, he also did have a child that he had with his stepdaughter. Yeah, some sweet home Alabama type shit, okay? Okay, does Joe Biden have a brother? I got a sister who's the love of my life. Sweet home Alabama. But that's just his dad, and that's just the things that we kind of know in the public eye. I'm sure that Elon knows a lot more since he grew up with the guy, but maybe Elon's different. We don't want to attach his dad's behavior with him. But next, I wanna talk about some of his business practices and also some of his personal relationships as well. Obviously, one of the things that he's known for is taking control of Tesla again. This is by design. The founders actually wanted Elon to kind of take over. And from that point on, he turned the company into a $1 trillion giant. Boy, damn boy, he thick, boy. But at what cost? And unfortunately for Elon and Tesla, it has been constantly criticized for its cars, its workplace culture, and business practices as well. And most of those targets are aimed directly at Elon since he is the CEO. Now, this section actually had a lot of information and a lot of scandals attached to it. And so I decided to go on the Wikipedia and sift through the most intriguing and the most important that I think you guys should know about. Now, if you wanna take a look at these after the video is done, be my guest. You can easily find them. Like I said, they're on Wikipedia, but I'm going to share with you the three biggest on this list. And one of the biggest issues was the fraud. But let's actually talk about that a little bit deeper so you understand what I'm talking about. First was the Solar City purchase in 2016 scandal, where the investors that were invested into Solar City were furious with the fact that Elon Musk had breached his fiduciary duties and enriched himself during this buyout. In order to get shareholders fired up about this deal, he had done a talk and revealed new solar panels that were coming out that were the tiles that later on ended up being fake. Now this next one you probably remember, and this was the funding secured tweet that he sent out back in 2018. That was an attempt to try to manipulate the stock by announcing that he might take the company private. And whether the stock moved up or down, it wouldn't have mattered. If the stock moved down, he could have just bought more stock. And if the stock went up, he would have actually received more stock options from the company because his salary is actually based off of company performance. And even if that didn't go through, at the very least, he could get more capital funding for the company at a higher valuation, which is good. And even at the end of the day, if funding was secured, which it wasn't, by the way. It is forbidden to make such claims. Now, if you know about the deal, okay, you know, fine. He paid $20 million for this little mishap and actually had to step down as chairman of the company as well. And with that, 
The SEC also had said that Tesla had to put additional control to oversee Elon Musk's tweets since he had a lot of influence and a big voice online and he's a little bit manic. And guess what? In 2021, another filed lawsuit that claimed that Musk violated that agreement as well. And within that, they also mentioned that the Tesla board failed to control Musk and his erratic tweets. Now, of course, we could talk about the accounting fraud that happened or the reselling of defective vehicles, but let's instead look at the autopilot and full self-driving allegations since those are more of a hot button issue for investors. At one point in time, Elon had gone online and said that full self-driving and robo-taxis would be available for the public by 2020. While making that announcement, he also raised FSD purchases by a few thousand dollars. He did that in an attempt to increase the FOMO or the fear of missing out and thus leading to an increase of sales for that full self-driving capability. Yet in Germany, authorities have ruled that Tesla and Elon Musk misled consumers in regards to what full self-driving actually means and even went as far as banning the actual language that they were using for their marketing, implying that what they had was autonomous driving. Naughty, naughty. The main problem is that FSD to be labeled autonomous full self-driving should be at what's called level four out of the five levels for driving assistance systems. Yet currently Tesla only offers level two and almost level three driver assistance systems, which is similar to their competitors, maybe slightly better, but all the meanwhile, those competitors are offering those features for free in their cars. So unlike Tesla, you don't have to pay an additional $12,000 for those features. And honestly, that's a very, very fine, dangerous line that they're walking with this whole FSD product. And it will be very interesting to see how this whole thing unfolds and how long it takes for this feature to actually unlock for the average consumer. And the main problem with this whole thing is that a lot of the consumers, in fact, most of them, are also investors into the company. And if you are an investor or a consumer, keep your eyes peeled for possible upcoming lawsuits against this false advertising fraud. There's also a whole ongoing thing where Tesla is abusing the EV tax credits given by governments. And to take advantage of these tax credits, Elon Musk has done some outlandish stuff. For example, the company Solar City inflated over 14 different giant solar projects by over 100% in their books. Or the fact that Tesla was selling a 94 mile, pretty much undrivable software block Tesla to grab more tax credits in Canada. But okay, okay, that's just his business practices and it's a doggy dog world out there, right? You could argue that he's a capitalist, he's a business mogul, just taking advantage of the system that was handed to him. And that's all fine and dandy. And maybe because he's ruthless in his business practices, maybe he makes up for that in his personal life. And he's had 10 kids, so maybe he's just a really loving American family man that has a good soul in his personal life. Unfortunately, his personal relationships have also had a bit of a dark past. For example, his ex-wife that he said he loved so, so much, she claimed that he treated her awfully. He even made some kind of abusive comments. For example, they were arguing about something and she said, you know, I'm not your employee, stop treating me like an employee. And he said, if you were my employee, I would fire you. They also lost a child together. And while she was openly grieving, he said that she was being emotionally manipulative to the situation. In an article, she also said that she felt very, very insignificant in his eyes. And at the end of the day, all he wanted her to be was his trophy wife. Kind of sad when you have a few kids together and that's all you want from your partner right? And at this point, the marriage was kind of falling apart and they went to counseling. And after a mere three counseling sessions, okay, three sessions, he said to her, I'm giving you this ultimatum. Either we fix this marriage today or I will divorce you tomorrow. First of all, Elon, what do you mean fix this today? In relationships, you can't just wave a magic wand if things are going wrong and say, hocus pocus, everything is fine, ocus, right? That's not how things work. What that sounds like to me, and again, I'm not a behavior psychologist by any means, but what it sounds like to me is start doing everything that I say and let me manipulate you or else this whole marriage thing isn't gonna work out. And as you might know, or maybe not, that's how his first marriage ended. And then he married his second wife and divorced her as well, and then married her again and divorced again. And most recently, his antics got a little more haywire. He went from having a kid with Grimes and then ended that relationship, then to having twins with a coworker over at his company Neuralink, and then being a home record. Let's just put it this way. Elon isn't that good with personal relationships. And this all begs the question in my eyes, if someone could be so manipulative to their loving partners, to the people 
people he's surrounded by, being somewhat shady with his business practices, and the whole saying of the apple doesn't fall far from the tree with his whole father thing. Does all of that make him a bad person and make him evil? Personally, I think it's very hard to tell. And the truth, like with most things, probably lies somewhere in the middle. But you let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing from you. And if you enjoy pieces of content like this, make sure to give this a like. And also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.